again, uh, obviously, uh, understanding the placement of aiming and, um, and anatomy comes, uh, comes into play and really does uh, help you uh, with this sort of stuff. But we're just having a little bit of fun and we can, in fact, go in and maybe do some of the jugulars in here, some of the arteries. Maybe even the one in here. So, so quite quickly we can start getting a lot of depth to um, to our sculptures. By uh, by taking advantage of being able to paint in layers and 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 also thinking about what it is that we want to, um, what it, ultimately what is the, uh, the end result that we want to achieve. Okay, so now that this is done, I can actually go in and again select uh, a different stroke. Let's go ahead and select the drag, and I'm going to select, no, nope, that's not the one I want. Let's select alpha 22, and let's change our color here, and in fact I'm going to push the intensity up quite high, uh, probably even higher than that. And X symmetry on, and let's just go ahead and start dragging this pattern over. And what the pattern is doing is actually uh, creating a cellular structure to the skin itself. It's breaking up that skin and giving it depth. Pretty good. So now that I've done this, I can actually go ahead and apply an overall tonality to this. So I'm going to, uh, this guy's kind of uh, not too healthy looking. So let's do something uh, along the blues. And uh, and again, we'll draw, we'll bring our, uh, our color intensity pretty low. So let's do five. And let's do a color and we'll just fill this object. So you can see that using this layering technique really allows us to be able to create uh, a lot of uh, very fantastic uh, color patterns and whatnot and a lot of depth uh, to our, our sculpture very quickly. I want to show you one other thing uh, beyond polypainting. And, and by the way, what I've just shown you, I've shown you how to airbrush, I've shown you how to dry brush, and I've shown you how to essentially mask. If anybody's done any kind of airbrushing, you're going to be very familiar with, uh, with masking. So I've just shown you how to mask by using alphas. Uh, and, and yes, you have complete ability to be able to go in and paint by turning this RGB up so that you can actually see. And uh, let me turn the alpha off. And uh, let's go ahead to a freehand stroke. Let me clear this. I can go ahead and paint very specific patterns that will mask. And then I can go in and like use something like yellow and paint over this, and if I clear my mask, you can see that that pattern is there. So you can get very specific with what you want to do and, um, and uh, have all kinds of abilities uh, with, uh, with this technique. But I do want to show you one more thing, and that's the app link. And if I go to document, you're going to see here that I basically have the app link properties. And the app link allows me to do a uh, front back, right, left, top, bottom, custom, and custom two. I'm going to go ahead and click on front. I'm also going to go ahead and click on a side. And, uh, and I think that should suffice for, uh, for this demo. And then I'm going to go ahead into document and I'm going to click on Z app link. Oops. And it's going to ask me whether I want to enable the perspective. In this case, I really don't want to. And I'm just going to go ahead and click OK. And it's going to go through the process of uh, connecting me. Now, let me just uh, drag this window. 
so that you can see this. Now remember earlier I said about the materials that if you wanted to use, for instance, a matte cap material and then you wanted to uh, light it, that there was a way to be able to do that. And really the way to be able to do that is, do, is through here. And what Z-Applink actually does is it separates out the shading information from the color information. And so if you imagine that you basically have two materials applied to this, you could essentially take the shading information and combine them and give you the end result. So uh, pretty cool. Now, what I want to do is I'm going to go ahead and create a new layer. And let me select a color here. Let's go to color picker. Let's select uh, red. And we'll just draw. Let's change our brush here. And let's just put red up here. And let's put blue down here. And let me just try it. Just gonna flip through these, find something that's kind of cool. I guess screen is alright. So now that I have this, I'm just gonna go ahead and duplicate both the layer and front copy. I'm gonna take the duplicate layer and actually move it down in between the back because that's gonna be the next one. And then I'm gonna take the front copy. and I'm going to move it up and I'm going to turn the the fill down to zero. Main reason is I want to select the three of these and I'm going to flatten this and I could have gone in and just renamed it but it's just faster for me to do it this way. Uh, the naming conventions cannot change that's uh, that's uh, the most important part. So I'm going to go ahead and select both of these once again I'm going to duplicate I'm going to take this I'm going to move it down in between uh, the right and then I'm going to take the back copy, second. I'm going to take the layer copy, put it above, and then take the back copy. And once again, just turn that down and flatten it. Repeat the process down here. Take this move it down to the left, take this, move it up here, put this in between, make sure these are on, turn that off, select these, and combine them. And then the same thing here, in this case I only need uh, the left copy, so I'm just going to do that, turn these on, flatten that, and collapse it. Okay. So now that that's done, I can go ahead and save this, come back into uh, ZBrush, and it's going to ask me to re-enter, and I'm, I'm going to say of course, and it's going to ask me whether or not I want to project it, I'm going to accept, So the beauty of it is what you see is that basically very quickly I went into Photoshop and was able to project color. Now of course uh, the back here you can see that uh, there's a little bit of gradient there, or the top here has got a little bit of gradient going on. And if I had stored a, if I had stored a top and, a, and some custom views, then, uh, then it would have been uh, very straightforward the end result. So, uh, Remember that you have the ability not only to poly paint inside of ZBrush, but you also have the ability to be able to go in and use the app link. So if you have uh, specific images that you want to apply, or if there's a specific texture that you want to apply, you have that ability to be able to do that inside of, of uh, Photoshop. A lot of people ask me whether or not uh, you can do color, uh, you know, color dodge, burn, and you know, screen overlay, all that sort of stuff. You can use the app link along with Photoshop, and you can do all of that. So pretty, uh, pretty powerful uh, tool set, and, uh, and you can really uh, do some amazing things in terms of texturing.